Chapter 31 My boy. Calvin and Frankie stood on the hill overlooking the large store. They observed Dylan's group as they rushed in and out of the building filling their vehicles with supplies. Tony and Pete had made a case to corner Sky and Dylan's group while they were still in the building before going to look for a suitable ambush location. But why do that when Calvin could let them do all the work and take the fully loaded vehicles when it was done? Then Calvin and his men could find a decent house and hole up for the winter somewhere. Frankie scraped his shoe in the dirt and stones alongside the asphalt road. He was clearly working up his courage, and Calvin was pretty sure why. Frankie heaved a heavy sigh. I don't want Tony touching my boy. He's got more than a beaten in mind. That's not what you promised him earlier. The boy took something from him, and it's only fair he gets something in return. Calvin eyed Frankie then turned his gaze back to the store as if he were bored. That was the alcohol talking. You know as well as I do, Tony wants more than that, he wants to kill him. Tony is a kinda rough guy. His reaction isn't surprising. Calvin waved his hand, he was done with this conversation. Frankie wouldn't be brushed off. What's wrong with you? That's my kid, my flesh and blood. You think I'm gonna stand by and watch someone take him out? Calvin watched another trip in and out of the store. Those people were like bees in a hive. Have you ever had a kid? Frankie said. That got Calvin's attention. Would you've stood by and let someone murder him? A white bolt of shock shot through Calvin at the question. He'd run down the parent of every kid that called his son a bad name. No, he would never stand by. Calvin bowed his head at the memory of his lost children, his heart heavy. He turned to Frankie. Look, I get it. But I can't take away from Tony what I promised him. You knew you might not even stick with us. Tony's been with me from the beginning. Calvin stared at the woods and pursed his lips before glancing back at Frankie. But I'll tell you what, if you can get the boy away. I won't stop you. Frankie looked at Tony as he hobbled out of the trees. Look at him, he's all muscle. Frankie glanced down at his own skinny frame and threw up his arms. How am I supposed to do that? Calvin's eyes narrowed. You do what any good father does. You protect your child by any means necessary. Frankie settled and nodded. I ain't been a good father. The drinking it makes me someone I don't want to be. Well, that's an easy fix. Stop drinking. Calvin stared at Frankie. Be a better man before it's too late, and you don't have a boy anymore. The words seemed to resonate with Frankie. He grimaced. Calvin couldn't help but wonder if it was from his sorrow over being a less-than-stellar father or a future without a drink. Calvin crossed his arms. I'll do what I can if you promise to do what you can. He waited for an assurance that Frankie would, at least, make an effort to take care of his child. Yeah, okay, of course, I will. Each word Frankie said became more determined. I'm not helping you with that woman your boy is calling Mama now. She's getting her due. Just the boy. Frankie nodded, that's all I'm asking for. Calvin glanced back to the store. Well now. It might be out of our hands. Calvin and Frankie watched as six men came out of the woods from the left of the building. Their guns aimed at Dylan's group. Well, they almost made it out. We gotta save Jesse. Frankie paled and raced to the car. And get that stuff. Calvin scanned the area coming up with a plan as he headed back to the vehicle.